Tanse. I'm an Indigenous midwife from the Métis Nation in what is currently Canada. I'm here speaking on behalf of the National Aboriginal Council of Midwives, Kinal Ansetik, Shira Pak, and the Office of Aboriginal Initiatives at Ryerson University, who are committed to the protection and preservation of Indigenous midwifery, including all related rights and cultural responsibilities. Traditional Indigenous midwives, cultural and clinical knowledges, and their contributions to the well-being and positive health outcomes of Indigenous peoples are largely unacknowledged in state health systems. Indigenous midwives work tirelessly to improve maternal and infant health throughout a person's reproductive life cycle, and most especially during pregnancy, birth, and postpartum. We respond to the specific needs of our communities, and by doing so, nurture the social and cultural reproduction of Indigenous life. I ask that you consider the impact of a baby being born into a healthy and intact community. Despite this critical role, community-regulated Indigenous midwifery is often undermined and actively criminalized to the detriment of community health. To close the gap between Indigenous and non-Indigenous health outcomes, the practice of Indigenous midwifery needs to be supported by state health policy and integration. The oppression of Indigenous midwives and the systematic barriers created to prevent Indigenous peoples from accessing Indigenous midwifery care are in direct contravention to Articles 24 and 25 of the Declaration of Rights of Indigenous Peoples and constitute a threat to cultural survival. Therefore, the following recommendations are proposed to nation states and UN agencies. One, recognize the harmful systemic effects of colonial colonization and create measurable goals to identify and close gaps in reproductive health inequities between Indigenous and non-Indigenous communities. Two, support Indigenous self-determination in all aspects of reproductive health, including education, community regulation, practice, and autonomous associations of Indigenous midwives. Three, eliminate criminalization of Indigenous midwives and make the necessary legislative and regulatory amendments that legitimize Indigenous midwives recognized by their communities as healthcare providers and guardians of Indigenous knowledge. Four, ensure the support and resources of the state for the education of new traditional Indigenous midwives by multiple routes of education, including apprenticeship and oral transmission of knowledge. In addition, we remind the organizations of the United Nations and member states that the Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues has already received recommendations that relate to Indigenous midwifery in the third, fifth, and ninth sessions, and we call for their immediate implementation. These past recommendations call on WHO, UNICEF, and UMFPA to incorporate Indigenous knowledge in health, wellness, healing, illness, sexuality, and childbirth, ensuring culturally comprehensive services, systems integration of traditional Indigenous midwives and state health care structures, and a commitment to legitimize and empower traditional Indigenous midwives to educate future Indigenous midwives 